Hello everyone, Holotide here, and if you like Halo content, make sure you sub to the channel. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of this commentary, I want to say that no, I do not like overpowered weapons. No, I don't want stuff to be super easy to use. No, I don't want power weapons like in Halo 5. No, I don't want them to have a super low skill floor, but I also don't want them to be completely underpowered as well. Power weapons are an incentive to get control of the map, just like equipment and power-ups, and while I think Infinite has done a decent job in that category, the weapons feel very lackluster. We are going to take a look at each power weapon in the technical preview, or at least what I think are power weapons, and discuss how they feel and act in game, compare them to previous titles, and offer solutions or suggestions. And this is where I'm going to tell you to post your opinions in the comments down below right now, either before I talk about each weapon or while I talk about each weapon. First up is the Sniper, and it is the quote-unquote long-range power weapon. It gives you the ability to two-shot to the body or one-shot them in the head. And while I think in Halo 5 the Sniper was way too easy, it seems it is either something incredibly wrong with it and infinite, or it's been nerfed way too hard. People have posted videos saying that dead zones are not working in this version of infinite, or at least you're stuck at the default dead zone. And people have said that aiming with controller feels very wonky on PC, but on the other hand, I've heard it feels pretty good on the Series X, and no scoping on both M and K and controller felt awful to me. So all of these issues with the aiming side of things makes the sniper feel very lackluster. I also had issues where it would zoom in twice when I only pressed the button once, and on that topic, the zoom seems way too high on the first scope in, and it also felt like it doesn't zoom into where you are actually aiming on the first scope as well. My solution is to slowly tweak the attributes or fix the bugs associated with it because I feel like that's probably the main issue with the sniper at this point. I would like it to be at the same difficulty level as a Halo 3 sniper. Next up we have the skewer and this is supposed to be an anti-vehicle weapon and you can definitely tell the difficulty to use it against Spartans is probably much higher than shooting at a larger object such as a Warthog. So I'm going to give it kind of a uh, benefit of the doubt in this video. The projectile is slower and the hitbox of the Spartans combined with the low aim assist makes it pretty difficult to hit a player moving around even if they are pretty close. And yes, I've seen clips and stuff of people getting like double kills with this skewer. I understand that you can get kills with it. And I also kind of assume that this is supposed to be the answer to the Spartan laser in Halo Infinite, but it's nowhere near as effective against the infantry. And while I do believe the Spartan laser was way easier to use, I would like to see something done with the skewer in terms of maybe aim assist or just helping the player out a little bit. But my biggest suggestion for this weapon is to let me pin Spartans to the walls. Please, that I, it's such a missed opportunity. Now we come to the heat wave and I see a lot of people hating on the heat wave and how it isn't very good. But this is my hot take. It was one of my favorite weapons I used in the flight. I have a nice little clip where I hit a dude who I can't see by bouncing the projectiles off the wall. And honestly, I think the trick here is to just kind of spam your shots with it. I got a lot of kills where I was ricocheting off walls and stuff on people that I couldn't see. And I treat it like the scatter shot and not a traditional shotgun. I was doing extremely well with it. I will say that that clip in one of the multiplayer trailers seems kind of impossible in terms of the tracking that the heat wave has. I, I can't recall a time where I felt like my projectiles curved like that. So I don't know if that's just something that is not in this flight and is in future flights, if it's been cut completely from the game with the tracking side of things, but I think that the heat wave is a fun weapon, and if you guys have opinions on how to change it or make it better without making it OP, please put them in the comments. Now we have the Bulldog Shotgun, and it's one of the few close power range weapons that we got to use in the flight. It's close range damage, it's bullet spread, it's fast fire rate, it's supposed to be a powerful close quarters weapon in the game, but it just feels weak in my opinion. Does it work well in extremely close quarters or tight hallways? Of course it does, yes, but it just feels off to me. And this is probably one of my most drastic suggestions that I would make, but I kind of wish that it was a slug shoddy with a slower rate of fire, just eliminating that pellet spread giving it a decent amount of range with the lower rate of fire and provide something that's really unique in a Halo game. But at the same time, I don't think the Bulldog is meant to take the old shotgun's place. But to me, it just feels like it's in limbo at this point. 
and almost feels like one of those weapons that people won't even pick up. But that's just me. Rockets. Now, I'm not going to say that this isn't some glitch or bug or anything like that, because there's definitely something going on in that clip. I did use a spanker, and I got kills where I thought I should, and I didn't get kills where I thought I shouldn't, but almost expected to. I think that rockets are in a pretty okay place, and probably are the easiest power weapons to use in the game, and it's kind of hard to not make a rocket balanced, or at least overpowered, so... I'm okay with how rockets feel for right now. I'm also not a huge explosion fan in video games. I, you know, I hate grenades and stuff like that. I feel like it's, there's no way to counterplay an explosion, I guess. I don't know. Now we have the Ravenger, and to me, honestly, this is more of a power weapon than most of the other choices. I was getting consistent two burst kills. It felt pretty good to use against both bots and real players. And the area of effect attack that it has where you hold down the trigger and shoot this giant red fireball thing doesn't seem that detrimental to players. And I never died to it during the flight, and I also never killed anybody with it during the flight. I think that it would be strong for denying areas of the map for people, adjusting the flow and whatnot, and kind of funneling people to go where you want them to go. So I'm okay if they don't buff the AoE attack to be some like crazy fire pit of death and destruction. As long as the main function trigger of the gun, you know, with the two burst kill is uh, still strong. I give the Ravager one and a half thumbs up. Now we come to probably one of the most disappointing power weapons in Halo Infinite, and that is the Gravity Hammer. To me, it maybe come down to just the, the feel of the weapon. I think it lacks that that crazy oomph that you get from using hammers in other games. The aspect that the gravity hammer is supposed to manipulate gravity and, you know, swing like crazy strength is such a cool concept for a weapon. But in Infinite, it feels anticlimactic when you hit somebody and they just kind of like fall down. In contrast, I think it's weird because if you melee people with your Spartan, they just go flying. If we look at previous games, the wind-up mechanic wasn't as long as it is in Infinite, but it also didn't really feel like an automatic kill or have an absolutely bonkers, you know, spread. Well, maybe in Halo 5, the lunge, you know, or the, the reach of the hammer felt really strong and the AoE felt large, but in Infinite, the wind-up doesn't seem to correlate with the damage or at least the illusion of that damage, such as sending people flying. Also, maybe the hit red was really bad in the flight, who knows, but I definitely want to see the ragdoll physics applied to this bad boy because I feel like the illusion that you're doing a ton of damage would help with the gravity hammer a lot. Now, this video is not to say that 343 is doing a bad job or anything like that. It is just a feedback video on some of the power weapons. Again, I don't think that Halo needs super powerful power weapons to be successful. I just think that there needs to be a little bit of adjustments made on the ends of power weapons to incentivize players to play around the map to take advantage of these weapons along with the power-ups and things like that and it's something that i hope to see changed in future flights or at least you know adjusted after the game releases because power weapons are a huge staple in halo and i think it would be sad if we didn't have you know that that feeling of being almost invincible or knowing that you're good with a sniper and challenging people and uh you know just taking heads off so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like down below if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and i will catch you in the next one peace